and good evening. It is almost seven o'clock. In fact, I think it's just gone uh, seven o'clock. So if you're watching live, thank you for joining me this evening as I take you through um, Ashtanga, uh, Ashtanga flow, so a condensed version of the primer series with possibly a couple of second series postures thrown in uh, for good measure. Um, as with any kind of yoga, uh, yoga class, please just go at your own pace, listen to your body. If you start to tense up in the face, if you start to screw up the face, then you're probably going a little bit too hard and you need to take a rest. If you're new to Ashtanga yoga, um, it is quite a challenging practice. Um, it, if you're uh, an ambitious beginner, then you know it's it, it's suitable for you. Um, but uh, but yes, yeah, so just go at your own pace. If you need to rest at any point, just sit back on your heels, rest in child's pose, um, or just take a seat and uh, allow yourself to get your breath back if you lose the breath. Remember, the most important thing about the practice practice is the breath. So we're going to start as always with a little bit of breathing, just to get us uh, into the mode and uh, getting us set, it's, get us set up ready for the practice. So coming into a comfortable seated cross-legged position, as always if your hips are a little bit tight, you can always sit on a block or on a towel, or something like that, just to lift the hips up a little bit. And let's bring our hands into chin mudra, tips of the forefinger and thumb touching, rest them on the knees, palms facing up, and we'll close the eyes. And just get settled in. So we're just taking this time to notice how you feel right now. Without any judgment. Notice how the body feels. Notice how the mind is, the emotional body. And grounding down through your seat, lengthen your spine. Reach the crown of the head towards the ceiling and tuck in the chin slightly so the back of the neck is long. Soften the forehead, the face, the jaw and the shoulders. And let's just bring our awareness to the breath. Noticing how the breath is. Noticing the quality of the breath. Fast or slow, deep or shallow. And let's start to deepen the breath. So drawing your inhale down into your abdomen. Allow the abdomen to expand like a balloon. And as you exhale, the abdomen contracts, the navel towards the spine. Just keep breathing into the abdomen. Just waking up the lower lungs. And start to bring the breath up the body now. So drawing your inhale down into your abdomen and then drawing it up into the chest, feeling the ribs expand, armpit to armpit. And taking the breath all the way up into the shoulders. Becoming aware of the breath moving in three dimensions. So long up the spine. And wide through the chest. And deep in the back the front of the chest. Just 
As always, as we move through the practice, try to keep the breath slow, controlled. If you lose the breath, if you start to pant, just notice when you've done that and try to control the breath again. Let's bring our hands into Anjani Mudra to our heart center. And we'll begin with the opening mantra, which is our invocation of gratitude. Enjoy it in the mantra if you know the mantra. Taking an inhale. Exhale. Inhale for all. Oh. One day, Guru Nam Charanar Vinde. Sandara Shita Swatma Sukhava Bode Nishreya Se Jangalika Yamane Samsara Hala Hala Moha Shantiye Abahu Guru Shakaram Shanka Chakra Sita Rina Sahasara Shirasam Shwetam Ranamami Patanjalim and open the eyes and take the hands forward, shift the weight into the hands, and we'll make our way to a plank position. So those fingers spread, shoulders over the wrists. If it's too much in full plank, Take your half plank, dropping your knees to the mat. Wrap the triceps under, nice and long through the spine. Tuck the tailbone under, engage the glutes, squeeze the legs. Inhale here. And exhale, lower down through your Chaturanga Dandasana or drop to the knees first if you need to. Inhale into your upward facing dog. Open the chest, send the heart forward, look up. And exhale, downward facing dog. Lift the hips up and back. And we'll hold our downward facing dog for a few breaths. Feel free to pedal the legs here, to stretch into the backs of the legs. Maybe moving your hips from side to side. So your first downward facing dog is just your opportunity to explore your inner space. Notice your areas of tension. Notice where you need to work in your body this evening. I remember in your downward dog, if you can have the knees bent, just make sure the spine is nice and long. Look into your hands, inhale, walk in the feet to the hands. Feet together, extend through your spine, halfway lift, left of the spine, look up, and exhale, forward fold, head comes in. Inhale to come all the way up to standing. Palms touch, gazing up to the thumbs. And exhale, Samasthi D. Hands by your side. So just check your Samasthi D here, your equal standing pose. So equal weight on the balls and the heels of the feet. The legs are strong. The tailbone is tucked under. Navel drawn towards the spine to activate your Uddiyana Bandha. Squeezing or lifting your pelvic floor to activate Mala Bandha. Chest is open. Shoulders are back. And gazing directly ahead. We're going to do three rounds of Surya Namaskar A and into two rounds of Surya Namaskar B and we're going to go into a little bit of a flow. As you inhale, raise your arms, find length through the spine, palms touch, gaze up to your thumbs. Exhale, fold forward from the hips, flexion in the spine as you fold, hands come to the mat, head comes in, lift your sit bones. Inhale, find length through your spine, look up, lean forward into the hands, and exhale, step in or jump in the feet back, find your high plank and lower down with control, Chaturanga Nandasana. 
Inhale into your upward facing dog. Strong legs, open the chest, look up. And exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale. Exhale for one. Feet hips width apart. Inhale. Exhale two. And breathe in length into your spine. Inhale. Exhale three. Wrap the triceps under. Inhale. Exhale four. Inhale. Exhale, five, looking between the hands. Inhale, walk or jump, feet to hands, extend through your spine, look up. Exhale, forward fold, head comes in. Inhale to come all the way up. Palms touch, gaze to your thumbs. And exhale, Samastiti. And again, Akum, one, inhale, raise the arms. Way two, exhale, forward fold, head comes in. 23, extend the spine, look up. Jadwari, four, exhale, jump or step the feet back, find your high plank and lower down. Pancha, five, inhale, enter your upward facing door. Send the heart forward, look up. Shad, six, exhale, into your downward facing dog. Inhale. Exhale. One, inhale. Exhale. Two, inhale. Get a good connection between your hands and the mat. Exhaling for three. Inhale and pressing from the shoulders. Exhale, four. Lifting sit bones, inhale. Exhale, five. Look between the hands. Up to seven. Inhale, jump or step feet to hands. Extend spine, look up. Ash down, eight. Folding forward, head comes in. Another nine. Inhale, coming all the way up. Strong legs, palm touch, gaze, thumbs. And exhale. Samasthiti. So the last one of Serena was got eight. Eight, go. Inhale, find length through the spine, gaze, thumbs. Dway, exhale, folding forward. Deep breathing. Trini, inhale, extend through the spine, look up. Lean forward. Jatwari, four, exhale, jump or step the feet back, high plank, strong in your core as you lower down through your chaturanga. Pancha, five. Inhale, into your upward facing dog. Press the tops of the feet down. And shut six. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale. Exhale. One, inhale. Draw navel towards the spine. Exhale. Two, inhale. Exhaling for three. Inhale. Exhale. Four, inhale. Exhale, five, look between the hands, up to seven, inhale, jump or step, feet to hands, feet together, extend spine, look up, ash down, eight, exhale, forward fold, pull the head in, another nine, inhale, to come all the way up, palms touch, gaze, thumbs, and exhale, Samasthiti, so, he bend your knees, prepare for B, come into a deep squat, then inhale, into your Utkatasana, palms touch, gaze, thumbs, Exhale, straighten the legs as you forward fold, head comes in. Inhale, find extension through the spine again, look up, lean forward, and check worry. Exhale, jump or step the feet back, high plank, lowering down, shut the run. Inhale, into your upward facing dog, open the chest, look up, and exhale, downward facing dog. Left heel pivots to your center line, right foot steps forward. Inhale and as you come up into your Vira Vadrasana, warrior one, palms touch, gaze, thumbs. Exhale, take the hands back down, step the foot back and lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. 
Deep breathe in, exhale, downward facing dog, right heel pivots to your center line, left foot steps forward. Inhale in as you come up, left knee over the ankle. Exhale, hands come back down, step the foot back and lower down. Inhale into your upward. And exhale, downward facing dog. Control the breath. Inhale. Exhale. One. Inhale, breathe with sound if you can. Exhale. Your ujjayi breath. Two. Inhale. Exhale. Three. Inhale. Exhale. Four. Inhale. Exhale. Five. Look between the hands. Inhale. Jump or step feet to hands. Extend spine. Look up. Exhale. Forward fold. Head in. Bend the knees. Inhale into your Utkatasana, palms touch. And exhale. So, Amastiti, so flow it a little bit now. Bend your knees, come into your Utkatasana. I'm going to hold for five breaths. Shift the weights into the heels. Open the chest. One, gaze to your thumbs. Two, can you find length through your spine? Three, can you sink the hips a little bit lower as you reach those fingertips high? Four. Five, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, extend the spine, look up. Exhale, jump or step the feet back, find your high plank and lower down, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Left heel pivots to your center line, right foot steps forward. Inhaling as you come up into your Virabhadrasana, your warrior one. I'm going to hold it here for five breaths. So we're trying to spiral the chest around so it's parallel with the top of the mat. Reach the arms up, gaze thumbs for two, three, trying to find length through your spine. Four, strengthening the legs. Five, inhale, straighten the right leg, pivot on the heels, and switch the feet to the other side. And exhale, bend the left knee over the left ankle. You're really working through the legs, through the hips, spiral that chest, so it's parallel with the back of the mat now. For two, lift the gaze, gaze to your thumbs. Three, four, five. Opening the arms up as we come into our warrior two, rear of a dress of a B. So left foot parallel, long side of the mat, right foot parallel, short side of the mat, gazing over the tip of your left hand. Soften shoulders for two. Draw the navel to the spine. Three. Relax the face. Try to find the steadiness in the posture for four, five. Straight on the left leg, pivot on the heels. So switching the feet, coming into the opposite side, right knee bends over the ankle. Gaze over the tip of the right hand now. Reaching through those fingertips, soften the shoulders for one. Just check that right knee doesn't start to knock inside the ankle. Drive it so the thigh moves in the same direction as the foot. For three, four, five. Exhale, windmill the hands either side of the front foot. It's an up if you're practicing your handstand. You can do your handstand now. Otherwise, just step that right foot back to meet the left. Find your high plank and exhale, lower down. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's hold for five breaths. Option to drop to your knees at any point if you need to. Have a rest. One. Two, deep breathing. 
three, four, soft neck, soft shoulders, five, Look in between your hands, inhale, walk or jump feet to the hands, extend spine, exhale, forward fold. Let's bend the knees, find a deep squat, and then inhale into your Utkatasana. And exhale, Samastitihi. And step back with the right foot. So, we're going into a little starfish shake. So, feet are about three of your own feet apart, parallel with the short sides of the mat. Take an inhale. As we exhale, pivot on the heel of the right foot, turn the foot out, soften the knees. As you reach to take hold of your big toe with a piece, fingers and thumb for the full posture. If it's not available, if you're a little bit tight in the lower back or in the hips, hand can come onto your shin, or you can use a block, or you can just be here. Just working into that side body and just working that right shoulder over that ankle. If we're going well, left arm reaches high and we lift the gaze, tip of the left hand for Adrishti. One. Try to find length through the lower back. Imagine you're trying to tie that left sit bone to the left heel. Two. Find space through your body. Breathe. Three. Four, five, exhale, look down towards the right foot, soften that right knee, inhale, press the mat away, come back to your starfish, and exhale to the other side, left foot pivots out, soften the knees as you reach, take hold of your big toe, or again, you're taking a variation. Right arm reaches high, if it's available, gaze tip of the right hand for your drishti, hold for one. You think about the length, through your spine here for two and pressing down through the ball of the left foot three four five exhale looking down inhale coming back up we're going to stay here we're going to miss that beat we're just going to heel toe those feet a little bit further apart so we're about a leg's distance between the feet. And again, the feet are parallel, short side of the mat. Take an inhale. As we exhale, pivot on the heel, the right foot, turn the foot out. Knee bends over the ankle this time. Elbow drops onto your knee for your option one. As we take the left arm overhead. I want you to think about reaching as much as you can with that left hand. Keep an external rotation in that left shoulder and then try to draw the shoulder blade down the back, peeling that chest open to the ceiling, gaze into for the left hand. If you're going well, if you're going for your full posture, right hand comes down onto the mat. For three, again we're staying here, just working on opening those hips up to the long side of the mat for four, five, exhale, looking down. Inhale, come back to your starfish. And exhale to the other side. Left knee bends over the ankle. So much going on in this posture. So leg strengthening, hip opening, side body opening, rotating. Gaze tip of the right hand. One. See if you can lift the inner arch of that back foot to open this right hip up for two. Really common for that right hip to collapse in this posture. Three. Pull that right shoulder blade in and down the back. Four, gaze to the right hand if it feels okay in the neck. Five, exhale, looking down. Inhale, coming back to your starfish. And exhale, pivot on that right heel. Turn face the back of your mat. I'm gonna drop that back knee to the mat. We're gonna do a variation of a twist. So right knee over the ankle, keep the back toes tucked under here. Inhale the left arm high. As we exhale, suck everything in and drive the left elbow outside of the right knee. Hands come into your prayer, for your prayer twist. If you're still working into twisting the upper back, you can just be here, send half forward and up, work into that twist for one. If you're going well, take it into a balance, lift the left knee off the mat. For two, 
take your full posture if it's in your practice. Three, keep working. Four, keep breathing, breathe into the upper back. Five, exhale, looking down. Inhale, make your way back to your starfish. And exhale to the other side. Drop the right knee to the mat. Step the left knee over the left ankle. Remember, have a rest at any point if you need to. Inhale, the right arm high. Find length, find space, tuck everything in. And exhale. Diving forward, twisting, right elbow hooks outside of the left knee now. And again, maybe we're here, this is all good. Just breathe into your upper back, work into that twist. So the elbow pushes into the knee, the knee pushes back into the elbow to find that twist in the upper back. For two, again, if you're going well, you're lifting that right knee up. For three, you're going super well, you're taking your full posture. Four, Five, exhale, looking down. Inhale, make your way back to your starfish. And exhale, bring hands to the hips. Let's turn the toes in slightly, heels out. So I want the outer edges of the feet parallel with the short sides of your mat. Spread the toes, inhale. Exhale, fold forward from the hips. Hands come to the mat shoulder distance apart. If you're super tight in the legs, maybe you're using a block or a chair in front of you to steady yourself. Inhale, find the length through the spine first, so open the chest. And then exhale, folding forward, crown of the head comes towards the mat. And we're holding for five. So again, keep those hands shoulder distance apart and make sure the elbows aren't falling out to the side. Keep pulling them over the wrists. So two, press the hands forward if you're going well to encourage the crown of the head down. Three, if there's bends in the knees, it's all good. Just keep lifting your center of gravity. For four, and just make sure you're not pressing out through the backs of the knees if you're super flexible. A little subtle bend. Five, inhale, straight back, straight arms, look it up. Exhale, flex your spine, look to your navel, hands come to your hips. Inhale to roll all the way back up to standing. And exhale, making our way into C. Inhale, arms out to a T. Exhale, interlace the fingers behind the back, palms towards each other. Inhale, send the hands away. Hold the shoulder blades together, and as we exhale, folding forward again. Again, micro bend to those knees as you fold forward. Now we're just allowing gravity to take those arms overhead towards the floor behind us. Now, depending on how flexible you are in the shoulder extension, they might might not move very far away from the back here. But just work into those shoulders. Hopefully, you're feeling a nice stretch. Through the legs at the same time, through the front of the chest, the front of the shoulders. We'll call that three. Keep moving with the breath. Inhale, find a little bit more length in the spine, a little bit more space, and exhale. See if you can press a little bit deeper. Four. And five. Release the hands. Bring the hands to the mat. Lift yourself up. We're going to spin around to face the back of the mat. We're going to bend the right knee and drop the knee to the mat. So knee is going to be in the center of your mat as we make our way into swan pose, so our variation of pigeon. So the knee is close, the heel, right heel is close to the left hip flexor. Keep the chest open, working the hips straight. So we're trying to get those hips around to face the back of the mat. So press the left hip forward, pull the right hip back. Soften shoulders, soften face, we'll stay here. Three, four, five. So if this was enough in your hips, you're gonna stay here. Otherwise, we're gonna make our way into more of a pigeon position by wiggling that right foot forward and sending the right knee towards the outside of the mat. If it's too much in the knees, if you feel anything in the knees, close that knee again, bring that heel towards the groin. 
And if we're in our pigeon, you're going to press through the ball of that right foot just to engage that leg a little bit here. Provide a little bit of support for the knee and work into the hip a little bit more. And we'll stay for two. And keep driving the left hip forward, keep pulling the right hip back. The three, soften the shoulders, soften the face, pull out if you're feeling any discomfort. Four, you're just going to be feeling tension releasing from the hips. Five. And tuck in the back toes under, lift up. Bring the right foot back to the mat. We'll spin around to the top of the mat now. And do the same on the other side. So pick that left foot up, drop the left knee. And coming into your squat pose to begin. Remember, if you're super tight, if there's no way that this, this hip, this thigh is on the mat, you can use cushions underneath your bum. You can use a block, a towel, or another yoga mat. So just find swan to begin. And again, just work that chest nice and open to the top of the mat. Right hip forward, left hip pulling back. We'll stay for two, three. Try to find space in the body. Length through the spine. Four, five. And again, moving into a pigeon position. Staying here, if this was enough, if you're already feeling it in, this left hip stay there. Otherwise, start to wiggle that left foot forward. The left knee comes more towards the outside of the mat. The shin becoming more parallel with the top of the mat here. Keep that left ankle flexed if you're moving into your pigeon position. And sink in the hips low, but pressing through the ball of that left foot here. And again, try to square the hips and the chest to the top of the mat as best as you can. And we'll hold for two. The three, four, five, and releasing, bringing hands back to the mat, bring that left foot back to the mat, we'll turn back around, find that wide-legged position, inhale, find length through the spine, look up, and exhale, flex your spine, hands come to your hips. Inhale to roll all the way up to standing. And exhale. Let's step back to sound the D top of the mat. And let's do partial of the mat. So now step back with the right foot. So we're facing the back of the mat. So we've got the right foot parallel with the long side of the mat. Left foot about 45 degrees to the right foot. Let's work the right hip back. So take a reverse prayer. Bringing the hands together behind the back. If it's impossible to find your reverse prayer, if the shoulders just say, uh -uh, no, not today, then you can always take hold of opposite elbows or just take the wrist behind the back. Inhale, find length through the spine. Press through the balls of the feet and exhale. Keep pulling that right hip back as you send the heart forward. Trying to keep length through your spine. So if you stop here, if you're already feeling a good stretch to the back of that right leg, and you want to hold it here, go ahead and do so. For two, if you're going well, the chest just keeps moving towards that right leg. For three, keep the navel in. Four, five. Inhale, going all the way back up. Pivot on the feet, turn to the left, and we'll set up for the other side. So facing the front of the mat now, chest is open, legs straight and strong, the left hip pulling back, inhale, and exhale, folding forward. And again, stop in when your body says stop. Keep drawing the navel back towards the spine, and let's hold for two. Three, four, five. Inhale to come all the way up. Open your arms out to the side. Come into a starfish. 
And exhale, we'll step back to Samus Dihdihi, top of your mat. So it's time for our balance, Utita Hasta Pada Gushtasana. So we're gonna jump or step the feet, hips width apart. If you know what you're doing, and you wanna go into full posture, as always, you can just kick up that right foot and take hold of the big toe. I'm gonna go for the variations this evening. So as we inhale, we're gonna bend that right knee. If you can, you take the big toe outside of the right foot, otherwise you just interlace fingers in front of the right shin. If you have that big toe, on your exhale, engage abdomen and straighten the leg as much as you can. If you're going well, take full posture, fold forward over the extended leg and we'll hold for two, or we're here, just working on our balance for three, four, nice and strong through that standing leg, five, inhale, straighten up if you fold it over the leg. As we exhale, left hand comes to the hip and start to open the leg out to the right. So just work in into the inner groin, keep hold of the big toe if you have it, one, gaze to your left, your drishti, if you're going well, but two, if it sends you too much off balance, keep gazing ahead. Three, four, five. Inhale, leg comes back to center. Exhale, head comes towards the knee. Knees to, knee to nose, touch all we try. And inhale, releasing the foot or the leg, straighten the leg, hold it up. One. Two, three, four, and five. Bend the knee to release. Give yourselves a wiggle, and we'll do the other side. So we're going to strengthen the legs in this posture, and flexibility, and also improving our concentration. Not an easy posture. Other side. Bend the left knee, take hold of your big toe, or again, you're taking the variation. As you exhale, you have that big toe straight in the leg as much as you can. One, keep control of the breath. Two, can you find a little bit more length through your spine, a little bit more space in the body? For three, soft shoulders, soft face. Four, five. Inhale, straighten up if you fold it over, and exhale, leg opens to the left. Pajra drishti, drishti to the side, gaze over the right shoulder if you're going well. One, two, engage that right glute, work the strength in that leg. Three, four, five. Inhale, leg comes back to center. Exhale, head comes towards the knee, knee to nose, touch or we try. It's just about that gaze shift. And then inhale, releasing the foot, the leg, hold the leg up. One, two, three, keep breathing. Four, and five, bend the knee, release. Good, give yourselves a wiggle. We're gonna make our way down. Yes, make our way down to seated to a full vinyasa. Inhale, raise the arms, palm such, and exhale, folding forward. Inhale, lengthen through the spine, look up. Exhale, jump or step the feet back, high plank and lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Come in to sit, practice your jumping through if you are. Otherwise, you're just bringing the right foot forward. <laughs> Pull the thigh into the body. Bring the left foot forward behind. Pull the thighs in, lower the bum down. Easiest way to come into your seated position. Coming into forward folding. So I want those feet together, toes pulling back towards the body. Make sure the sit bones are connected to the mat. If you are super tight in the backs of the legs, maybe sit on a block or sit on a cushion. And again, remember we're trying to fold forward from the hips here. Get nice and tall through the spine, inhale. And as you exhale, start folding forward from your hips. Try to stop the chest collapsing. As soon as the chest 
and the stomach start to come towards each other. You've gone too far. Keep the chest open. When that back starts to round, you're going to stop there and hold. Catch big toes if you can take big toes, or you're just holding ankles or shins. And breathe. One. Move with your breath. Inhale to find the length, to find space. Exhale to press deeper. Two. Keep drawing shoulders away from the ears. Three. Four. Five. Inhale, lift the gaze. Exhale, hands either side of the thighs, preparing for a little L-sit option to keep the heels down and just to lift the bum up. Lean forward, get some flexion in the spine, make sure those elbows are bent, and then inhale, pull the bum back and up. Exhale, lower the bum back down. Coming into a forward fold again. Take it a little bit deeper if you can. Inhale, find length. Exhale, fold. Take outsides of the feet if you can get there. Otherwise, you're just here on the shins or you're using a strap. Don't pull so hard on the strap and try to find space, try to find peace. And we'll stay for two, three, four, five. Inhale, lift the gaze. Exhale, release. Hands either side of the body, leaning forward, trying for the house. It may be seen if you can lift the heels up this time. Inhale to lift up. Exhale to lower down. And we'll just bend the knees and bring the hands behind the back for Pavottanasana or Pavottanasana variation. So I'm going to do the variation reverse table. So this is going to work into our shoulder extension and also into our hip flexor. If you know the full posture and you want to do your Pavottanasana, go ahead. So the feet hips width apart, and when you're ready, we're just going to press heels of the hands down, open through the chest. Option one to stay here. If you're going well, option two, lift those hips up. For one, nice and long through the neck, gaze into the ceiling. For two, if it's too much, keep chin to the chest. Three, keep breathing. Four. And five, exhale, chin to the chest, lowering down. And then straighten the legs. Coming into some hip opening, bend the right knee, heel towards the buttock, knee falls out to the side, sole of the right foot on the inner left thigh. The left leg strong. Again, you can use the support underneath that right knee if it's really lifting off the mat here. Inhale, fine length. Exhale, exactly the same as in our forward fold, we're hinging from the hips, try not to round the spine. Reach towards that foot. If you can take the foot, take it. If not, we're here on the shin or we're using a strap. One. And again, breathe. Relax. Go inside your body. Two. Where is this posture? Where do you feel the tension? Three. Keep this left leg nice and strong. Pull the toes back. Four. Five. Inhale, lift in the gaze. Exhale, release. We're going to come straight into John Ushasana D on this side. So we're going to twist the body open. So it's with the, to the right. So we're nice and long. The chest is length it long with the long side of the mat. Get your words out, Granny. God's sake. Um, left hand onto that right knee. Inhale, the right arm high. And as we exhale, side flexion. So we're just trying to reach over towards that left foot. As always, it doesn't matter if you take the foot, as long as you feel that nice stretch through the side. Just check that the, the chest doesn't start to collapse. Keep it nice and open. And move with the breath. Inhale, find a little bit more length, a little bit more reach. And exhale, twist the body open a bit more. Staying for three, four, Five, exhale, looking down. Inhale, coming back. And exhale, straight on the right leg. We're going to come straight into the left side. Bend the left knee, heel to the butt. Knee falls out to the side. Sort of the left foot onto the inner right thigh. Inhale, find length. Exhale, fold forward. Again, take the foot, the ankle, or the shin, or use a strap. Inhaling, exhale. Soften shoulders, 
soften face, breathe. One, can you breathe into the upper back, into the upper body? Two, can you keep that navel drawn in? Can you find a vacuum in your lower abdomen? And three. Four. Five. Inhale, lift the gaze. Exhale, release the posture. Open the body up now to the left side of your mat. Right hand reaches towards that left knee. Inhale, left arm high. And exhale, side flexion. So you're just trying to feel that release through the lower back, through the side body. Reaching towards that right foot again. It doesn't matter if you make it or not. And we'll hold for one. Just trying to lift the gaze. So you're looking towards the ceiling underneath that left arm. For two, three, again, breathe, breathe into your tension. Four, five, exhale, looking down, inhale, coming back, and exhale, release. Let's take a vinyasa. If you're practicing lifting up, you can lift up, otherwise, cross the legs. Pull the feet in, take the hands just in front, lift the bum up, step the feet back, find your high plank, and exhale, lower down. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, jump in. Oh, we're stepping through, right foot comes forward, left foot comes forward. Keep the weight in the hands. If you can, drag the feet through, drag them through. Otherwise, just plant the bum and straighten the legs. Let's come into Navasana. Let's do three rounds, three rounds of five breaths. So let's bend the knees, shoulders back, chest nice and open, find that balance point, point between sit bones and coccyx, hands underneath the thighs, lift the feet up and we'll hold for one, two, three, Four, five, exhale, cross the legs, hands either side of the body, lean into the hands, inhale, lift the bum back and up, exhale, lower down. And again, round two, inhale. One, if you're going super well, release the legs, maybe raise the lower legs. For two, you can come into full Navasana if you wish. Three, Four, stay nice and open through the body. Five, exhale, cross the legs, lean into the hands. Inhale, lift the bum back and up. Exhale, lower down. Last round, inhale. One, find the strength. Two, strengthen the body and strengthen the mind. Three, four, and five, exhale, cross the legs. You're going to stay seated. And be mindful that we're not doing some crazy long class this evening. Let's come into Balakanasana. So bring the soles of the feet together. Again, if you're really tight in your adductors, sit on a block or on a cushion. And if the knees are high, then you're just going to be here. Just cup the feet, send in the half forward, try to get some length through your spine. If you're a little bit more open in the hips, open the soles of the feet up to the ceiling like you're reading a book. The elbows come back either side of the body, the shoulders move away from the ears. Inhale, find length. And exhale, send the heart forward. So try not to round the back here. Working through those hips and we'll hold for one. Use the strength in the outer legs and the glutes to draw the knees down for two energetically sending the knees wide three four five inhale lift the gaze exhale release come into wide legged so stay on your block or on your towel if you're on that Legs straight and strong, toes pulling back towards the body. Find length with the spine. Inhale. 
And as we exhale, exactly the same, trying to hinge from those hips, try to keep the body open and to bring the chest towards the mat. If it's available, you reach to take hold of the outsides of the feet or you're here on the shins, this is all good. Inhale, lengthen in and exhale, move with the breath. Keep those shoulders soft and relaxed. But two, deep breathing, three, four, every inhale, find length, every exhale, a little bit deeper, relax a bit more, five, inhale, lift the gaze, exhale, release, let's bring the legs back together, and we'll come to lie down with control. And let's come into Urdhva Dhanurasana or Bridge Pose Variation. So if full back bend it is in your practice, we're going to do two rounds of five breaths. If it is in your practice, you can go ahead, set up for your back bend. Otherwise, we're just going to bend the knees, bring the heels in towards the buttocks. Not too close, we just want those heels or ankles underneath the hips. And we want the feet, hips with the part and parallel with each other. Take the hands by the heels. Pull the shoulder blades under the back so the chest is nice and open. And feel that connection between your feet and the mat. So balls of the feet pressing down, heels pressing down. And when you're ready, inhale as you lift your hips. And we'll hold for one. Drive through the hips, lift, lift, lift. Two. If you're in back bend, then could press in the legs straight, so you're pressing into the upper back, opening the chest a bit more for three, four, five, exhale, lowering down. And last round, inhale, lift the hips up, all the whole body off the mat. Hold for one. Squeeze the glutes if you're in your bridge. Two, three, and work that leg strength, press, press, press. Four, and five, exhale, lower down. We want to pull the knees into the chest. I'm just going to take the arms above the head, just have a little rest here. Just relax. Not traditional in the Ashtanga practice, but we're going to come into a recline twist. Take your arms out to the side, bring your feet together, lift the feet up, and slowly with control, dropping the knees over to the left and dropping the head over to the right. Breathe in, relax in, just feeling that nice stretch up the back and across the chest. And draw head back to center. Inhale, draw knees back to center. And exhale, taking those knees over to the other side. And dropping your head to the left. And relax. Release. Drawing head back to center, draw knees back to center. Give yourself a squeeze. Or rock forwards and backwards and come to a seated position. Simple cross legged position, or again, you're sitting on a cushion, taking half lotus if it's in your practice, or full lotus. Sitting tall, take an inhale. Bring hands into chin mudra, exhale, drop chin to the chest. Close your eyes. Deep breathing. I'm trying to breathe with sound. Just 
Check there's no tension that's crept into the face. No tension in your shoulders. Uh, lifting the gaze. The last bit of effort before Ashavasana, Uplutihi, Uplutin posture, or a variation. You can choose to do L sit again. Uh, so taking the hands either side of the body, the legs straight, or you can try in a cross legged position, just trying to lift the body up. So we usually do this in full. Uh, for lotus, if you can get into full lotus, take your lotus. If not, no worries. Again, you're just going to do your variation. With any kind of lift, we need flexion in the spine. So take the hands either side of the hips, lean forward, find that flexion, and inhale, lift the body up. And we'll hold for one, two, keep breathing, three, find strength through the core, four, five, six, Let's try for 10, 7, 8, 9, and 10, exhale, release, and we'll come into a comfortable seated cross-legged position. If you straighten the legs, let's bring our hands into Anjali Mudra to our heart center at the end of the class. We'll do our closing mantra from seated. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale for all. Swasti prajapyaha aripalayantam nyayena magena mahim mahishaha go brahmane bhyaha shubhamastu netyam loka samasta sukhino bhavantu Shanti, 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 Hare Yom. And we'll come into our final posture, Ashavasana. Taking your heels as wide as your mat. If you have a jumper or a blanket, go ahead. Get your jumper or blanket to put over you as you rest in your Shavasana. And we'll come to lie down with control if you can. And take up space with the arms, palms facing up. And shoulder blades under the back so the chest is nice and open. Tuck the chin slightly back of the neck long. Release your ujjayi breath. Return to normal breathing. Just allow the body, when you're comfortable, to be still. Just notice any sensations in your body right now. And bring your awareness to your natural breath.
Just notice the stillness and the calmness in the body. Just noticing if any thoughts come up. Noticing those thoughts, acknowledging those thoughts. And then just drawing your focus back to the breath. Remembering that the yoga practice is a journey of discipline and patience. A way of opening the mind as we open the body. As always, if you wish to stay in your Shavasana now a little bit longer, go ahead and do so. It'll take as long as you need in your Shavasana. Maybe you're really comfortable right now and you don't want to move and that's fine. Otherwise, we're going to take a deep inhale. Exhale the breath completely, connect navel to the spine. Inhale the breath into the heart space. Exhale the breath into the fingertips and the toes. Begin to wiggle the fingers and toes and bring movement back to the body. Rotate your wrists and ankles. Moving your limbs and bringing feet and legs together, taking the arms overhead for a full body stretch. And your knees into the chest, give yourself a squeeze, just thanking yourself for showing up on your mat. And rock onto your right hand side when you're ready. And gently blinking the eyes open. And join me again in a comfortable seated cross legged position. I want to thank you for practicing with me this evening or whenever you're practicing with me, if you're watching it after the fact, after it's been live. Um, yes, thank you for your patience. Thank you for joining me in these classes. If you like the video, as always, please, please like the video. Be sharing with others uh, who you think might enjoy uh, this class or any of the other classes that I've done. And as always, if you are financially stable, then uh, please feel free to donate. There's a link always in the description so you can click on any of my other videos to find a link to my PayPal if you want to make a little donation. If you aren't financially stable like me, then please just enjoy the classes for free. I will bring them you every evening, Monday to Friday, seven o'clock and Sunday mornings at 9.30. So I hope you all feel a little bit more open in your body, a little bit calmer, quieter in your mind. And I shall see some of you tomorrow for, it's going to be Ashtanga again tomorrow. So Ashtanga is going to be Tuesday and Thursday, Vinyasa Flow, Monday and Wednesday. And then on a Friday, it's that Yang Yin practice, which is really, really yummy and nice way to end the week. So thank you for practicing with me. As always, if you have questions about your practice, please drop me a message. You can get me on WhatsApp or on any of my social media platforms, and I will be happy to help you guys. Thank you again. Namaste. 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 Love to you all.